Good evening. In other news tonight, the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration, the CCMA, which deals with workplace disputes, says its caseload is increasing and that there are more and more retrenchments in the, in the construction sector. The CCMA claims to be the biggest labour dispute agency in the world by a number of referrals. Its director is Cameron Morajane. He's with me now. Mr Morajane, good evening. Thanks so much for coming in. Good evening, thank you for having me. All right, firstly, the number of cases in your annual report, you say it's increasing. Is there a specific reason as to why it's increasing? Is it the economic climate? That's the contributory factor as well, uh, but there are a number of factors that, that does that. Uh, ordinarily, our cases are increasing due to the economy, the slow growth of the economy, and today the biggest play is the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and over and above that, we have the introduction of the new laws, uh, such as the minimum wage, together with the basic condition of employment being amended, which has caused a significant increase in our caseload more than, than, what, than what we projected. So that's essentially what causes the caseload to increase. So you've actually had more cases around things like ma national minimum wage yes. than you actually expected. I mean, we knew there would be some cases. That's yes. the whole point. Yeah, definitely, yes. <laughs> but, but you had more than you expected? <laughs> yes, we had projected about 5% or so initially for the first three months. But we are setting much, uh, double that figure, which is much more than what we had anticipated in the first three months. And now in September, we are way above that. And we're just stretching our resources to the limit um, in terms of the commissioners and the resources and all the related materials for managing a case is concerned. So yes, definitely we're sitting at above 193,000, almost 194,000 cases. Per annum. So that's quite significant, taking into account the impact that the national minimum wage has had uh, with the type of complaints and the type of cases that we're talking about and as far as the national minimum wage is concerned. It's incredible to think people are actually paying less than 20 rand an hour. You know, sometimes I make a very simple example, that if you go out with your friend for a drink or you go for lunch, you spend about five to a thousand and depending whether it's alcohol or not, all that they're asking for is just to have 20 rand mm. out of the total amount. So if we can, as South African, have this commitment to our constitution, to our preamble, that talks about unleashing the capacity of people and trying to alleviate the triple crisis. The basic issue is to say, instead of spending 1,000 rand on alcohol, let me spend 20 rand just to give it to, a, to an employee who's more deserving for us to be able to deal with unemployment and poverty. It's a question of a consciousness and decision that we have to make because I do not think that it's an impossible task. It's a responsibility, a constitutional mandate for us to be able to deal with this 29% of unemployment. It takes such a commitment to make that difference. One of the big issues is what's happening in the construction sector. You've dealt with a lot of retrenchment issues there. What's going yes. on in the construction sector? I mean, it would seem that there's been almost, I suppose, a lot of confidence. The construction industry you see there's different factors there and you find that most of the fixed term contracts informally to off employment compliance with laws it's, it's quite a quite a challenge especially on the smaller ones what we've decided to do we want to do a, a direct study to understand what causes the construction industry to have such a high referring rate also and also as far as the issue of retrenchments are concerned it's quite an important issue business for example sector a professional sector in terms of our referral system, the cases that we have, is the leading one also. So what we need to do as a country is to say, and what we're doing at the CCMA, is that we must not just look at the stats, because stats are just suggestive, they're just the research, but it calls for action. We should talk less and do more. Stats are there, it says, when this sector is referring more, when there's more retrenchments here, let's dig in and find what the cause is and find a solution, not just to find it, execute it. You sound, if I may say, a little like the Reserve Bank Governor. He says the same thing every two months. <laughs> it's the reality. It's the same thing about the Fourth Industrial Revolution. It's such a beautiful concept that sometimes when you say it, they think you're intelligent. That's not the point. The issue is about what does it mean, because you've got artificial intelligence, you've got the gig economy issue, you've got automation issues. All these factors and automation, and most of our sectors and industries currently are affected by that concept. But the problem that we have, we forget that even if you have 4IR, automation and digitization, there's something called a human in command, which is a concept I found in, when I was attending a conference in Venice, which means that whatever systems in 4IR that you have, in the end, humans make the decision. And when it comes to 4IR, the way we are reacting to it, because we are reacting to it, it's something that did not start now. The United States has spent trillions of rents on technology. We are not exempt because part of the global family as a sovereign state. What we expected to do, we, would have, we should have planned long before the time for us to say, 
the person that I employed today in 2019, what kind of a work am I expecting in five years and 10, ten years from now? Because you don't employ for now, you employ for the future. Then we reconstruct, then we engage, we get transparent, we get out of silos, we find a country solution to a country and a global problem. Okay, one of the other things you talk about in your annual report, of course, is the dispute resolutions that you provide. Yes. Um, for a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of this, they will measure you by speed. Yes. In other words, how quickly are you able to resolve? Now, some yes. of them are very complicated. Some of them are Correct. pretty simple. If someone's paying yes. 19 rand, he's breaking the law. Correct. How, how, when it comes to dispute resolution, are you able to sort of get those done quite quickly? When it comes to speed and issues of expedient way of resolving dispute at CC CCMA, were fabulous, were quite fantastic when it comes You're to the that. first person who sat in that chair and said that about their organisation. Absolutely, organization. Uh, were absolutely fantastic. I'll, I'll, the, our report will show you that when you receive a dispute at the CCMA, despite this huge caseload, mm -hmm. within 30 days we conciliate a matter. Mm -hmm. Within 90 days, the matter must be arbitrated and finished. But of course, we're not claiming that all cases mm. are completed within the 90-day period. There's postponement and there's complex matters, there's many witnesses, but that's not the order of the day. The bottom line is that when the LRA was created foundational to it, it's about ensuring that the system is quite efficient, number one. Number two, the issue of expedition is critical because how many of us in the society today can stay the entire month without a salary. Even those that have a salary, they can hardly finish a month. So if you don't have a salary because they're dismissed, waiting for the case to be, to be concluded, that offends the object of the consecution, including the LRA. So we have to be expedient in how we deal with it. That's why in our report you will see that on average we take 40, 24 days to conclude a conciliation. Then if it's not settled, it moves to the next stage. We conclude it within the next three months. So that is one thing that we are very good at. That's why I'm saying we're quite fabulous when it comes to that. Okay, um, every government, every organisation that receives uh, funding from government and every organisation in our society will talk about the lack of resources. Do you have the resources to do what you need to do? We do have the resources, but they're not sufficient. I'm grateful that the Department of Employment and Labour has contributed, because they are our funders in terms of our budget, to say, let's give you more because we gave you an expanded jurisdiction, which means, therefore, that you are doing more than what you ordinarily do. So we gave you more responsibility. It comes with resources. The resources is where we've got wonderful commissioners, interpreters, case management officers, our executive and the board that runs this important Titanic. But the bottom line of the Titanic is that for it to be driven and steered correctly, it needs resources. We do have those resources, but we could do more with that so that the 24 days can become 20 days, so that the three months can become two months for us to employ more commissioners because our human resource is our execution tool, but we need that tool to be able to execute expeditiously and effectively. What happens beyond, uh, for example, once the case is concluded, the award must be delivered by law within 14 days. We do that. There's few that goes through the cracks. Of course, that's expected. We're not perfect, but we still remain very effective and very expedient in the manner how we do our cases. Cameron Morajani, thank you very much indeed for coming in. The director thank you of very the CCMA, much. the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration.